Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's use the Maclaurin series to find out how to write the function e to the x. Again, starting with the general format of the Maclaurin series, f of x is equal to f evaluated at 0 plus the first derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 1 factorial times x plus the second derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus the third derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed, and so forth. Now the advantage here is that the function e to the x, when we take the derivative of that, we get e to the x. The second derivative, e to the x. The third derivative, e to the x, and so forth. It's the only function that we have where when we take the derivative, we get back the original function. So now if we evaluate the function at 0, we get e to the 0, which is equal to 1. When we evaluate the first derivative, at 0, we get e to the 0, which is equal to 1. The second derivative, e to the 0, which is equal to 1. So you can see that every derivative, the n derivative, or any derivative, we evaluate the function e to the x at x equals 0, and we're going to get 1. Which then means, if we then plug that back into the original Maclaurin series here, we can then see that f of x, which is e to the x, is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 factorial times x plus 1 divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed and so forth. And then if we simplify that, we can see that e to the x can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial out to infinity like that. And then if we're trying to find the value for e, we simply set x equal to 1, so instead of e to the x, we get e to the 1, which is the same as simply e, and then we replace every x by 1 right here, so we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 sixth plus 1 24th plus 1 tw 1 twentieth plus 1 over 7 20. Notice that this is 4 factorial, 5 factorial, 6 factorial, and so forth in the denominator. And then if we add up all these terms in the infinite series, we get the exact value of e. Or, if you only need it to a certain number of decimal places, you only need a certain number of turns, uh, terms. Now notice that since we have factorials in the denominator, they grow very, very quickly. As the denominator gets very large very quickly, the value of each term depreciates or gets smaller very quickly, and it doesn't take as many terms here to get a reasonable value for e. Let's try it. Let's add these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 first terms together to see how close we get to the value of e. Knowing that the value of e is equal to 2.71828 and so forth. It doesn't keep repeating the same, in the same way, but for the first so many digits it does, decimal places it does. So let's see what we get here. So this is 2.5 plus 1 divided by 6, plus 1 divided by 24, plus 1 divided by 120, plus 1 divided by 720 equals, and for the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms, we get E is equal to 2.718 and almost 1 if I want to get it to one more decimal place. So notice that we have 2.71828, so at least we have it correct to the first three decimal places, just using the first seven terms of the infinite series, or as we call it, the Maclaurin series. And that's how it's done.